Hello booktube, welcome or welcome back to my channel. So um, this video is a book talk. I'm going to talk about this book that I've just read very recently. It's called The Liberation of Sita and it's by Volga. And this book was translated by T. V. J. Kumar and C. V. J. S. Sri from Telugu to English. So I'm um, first of all this book is a very um, it's a very simple book actually, um, and it's also a myth retelling. And I've always think retellings of myth or you know um, of or epics or or stories that have been told before. You know the retelling is to be something that I, I feel kind of wary about. I don't know why because probably because I'm not familiar with a lot of myths or epics like in this case in in, in this case the liberation of sita is about the retelling of um ramayana the ramayana and i just want to say i am not familiar with the ramayana i've not read the epic um i think it's a very long epic and because i'm not familiar with it so i'm not going to try to tell you what it's about but i think um uh, it's it's very well known for um, one particular um, storyline in which Prince Rama has to rescue his wife Sita from um, from an evil king named Ravana. Um, I think that is kind of like one of the most famous um, scenes or uh, storyline from that epic. I I feel that it's actually more than that. You know the the epic poem itself. But anyway, um, the liberation of Sita is actually the retelling of that, and you know you can say that this book is quite a wonderful book to read for Women in Translation Month because not only the writer is a um, is a female, but um, and also um, the half of the translators team is also a woman um, and it's also a story about a woman um, this book is very feminist now Volga um, is a is the pen name um, of uh, of the author named Popuri Lalita Kumari and um, she usually writes in Telugu and she's also a translator um, anyway uh, I read this book like I said uh, it was a very quick read a very simple uh, simple book it's actually very short and this book is um, it's arranged in five vignettes uh, basically um, showing us the story of Sita from the point of view of Sita um, through different scenes that happen in Ramayana. Now, these different vignettes, they are not necessarily arranged in chronological order, but the main thing is that um, much of the... Uh, what ties these vignettes together are um, is the fact that they are all about Sita's experience or encounter with various female characters um, in the epic, um, the side female characters, um, her interaction with these women, and most of these women are women who have been sort of um, kind of um, not given the voice or you know, not given a voice in the original epic, I assume from what you know, from the nature of this retelling, um, women who are just kind of um, set to the sideline um, and so it is in these vignettes that we get to listen more about the stories of these women um, based on um, uh, how the writer sort of weaves the story for us and how they interact with Sita and how th these women's experience sort of shape Sita and how she sees herself, how she realizes that her position as the wife um, of Prince Rama 
um, isn't exactly a position that um, as as wonderful as she thought it was and the way that um, these stories just sort of all come together they kind of show us how they influence um, Sita's perception of herself and I think it's it's also kind of nice that these stories um, reimagined by the author kind of concludes with um, how Sita sort of concludes her story in the epic um, coming back from um, or coming back to um, where she come from I mean, spoiler <laughs> anyway um I would say for for this book um, what I really like about it is how it kind of explores the idea of feminism now of course this book is a feminist book and you know it, it, it explores the ideas of feminism from the perspective of sisterhood and I think that that is um, it it feels very um, I wouldn't say refreshing but it feels very um, positive there is a lot of sense of um, you know uh, up being you know this this sense of uplifting in this book that kind of sets it apart from um, how usually you know how feminism is usually portrayed or being seen by the public um, and the ideas of feminism as strong women who can stand or act the, the same way as men um, which is not entirely um, you know a uh, a wrong way of uh, portraying it but at the same time this book highlights the strength of femininity rather than um, allowing women to be elevated by being masculine if you know, if that makes sense so in a way this book highlights a lot um, about the feminine aspect of of womanhood and I think it's really powerful that is able to do that in a in a very digestible um, writing style. Now another thing that I liked about this book is that um, it explores the idea of misogyny not only through the experience of women but also through um, through the experience of um, a male character which is actually at the final chapter of this book um, through the um, experience of uh, the character of Rama no less and I think it does a nice job of showing us that misogyny is not necessarily just something that affects women but also affects literally everybody now the way Rama just sort of process how you know um, his his own personal realization about the misogyny that is happening in his society and how it affects Sita. I mean, um, you know, it's uh, that chapter is basically his reflection on misogyny, um, and I think that it's up to the reader's interpretation whether they would want to accept that as a um, you know as a um, as a defense uh, for Rama's action towards her uh, towards his wife or whether you know it's it's like it's not good enough for him to just feel that way he should have done better or something like that um, I think that's up for you know, the, the readers interpretation obviously I want to avoid spoilers here um, but I like this inclusion because it just pretty much highlights that misogyny is not just about you know men bad women good but what it really is which is basically misogyny bad um, men and women okay 
<laughs> just okay because um, another thing that you can see in this book is that misogyny is also being perpetrated by other female figures. Um, but yeah, another thing that I kind of like reading um, in this book is that it doesn't try to pass judgment too harshly on anyone. Um, and so you can get that whole sense of positivity when you read this book. You're not, I don't think that you're being manipulated in feeling in certain way. And so I feel that in that, in because of that, this book is very accessible for everybody. Um, and I think that's great. It's a very simple book. So if you're looking for a, a book with um, particularly, um, you know, poetic or beautiful writing, I would say that the writing is okay, but it it's not something that I could you know I would consider as really lyrical or something like that. Um, so yeah, if y one might get bored by this book if you're looking for that kind of writing style, but um, I think that this book is great for um, first of all people who are not familiar with the epic Ramayana like me. Um, and second of all, uh, literally everyone else. <laughs> and also for non-readers, because I think that the writing style in here is just, um, it's, it, it's straight to the point. So um, it's almost, almost like a self-help-ish kind of writing, but it's not self-help. But, oh well, you know, just almost. Um, so yeah, you could say that that is also a strength. Um, you know, depending on your point of view, um, or it may be a, uh, a turn-off if you're looking for a particular kind of writing style. Anyway, um, those are my thoughts on the liberation of Sita, and I'm curious to hear what you guys think if you have read this book. Um, let me know in the comments. Um, anything you want to let me know in the comments. <laughs> um, I guess that's it. Um, maybe I'll update you again with um, any of my Women in Translation reading um, later this month. And uh, I'll see you again in a different video. So until then, take care. Thanks for watching. And bye.